So I'm, I'm here to talk to you about the G plus C project that um, ICBF was involved in. Um, just in, in relation to myself, I've been with ICBF for 17 years now and my background is actually in data and databases and IT projects. So I, I might have a different slant on things to, to some of the other people here. Um, I, I was not directly involved in the research side on G plus C, but I was involved in some of the, dis the discussions on setting up the uh, data platform. Um, I was also involved in another project called Optimare, which uh, dealt with mere data, which uh, gets mentioned quite, quite a bit in G plus C. And uh, more recently in ICBF, I've, I'm involved in projects that are looking at measuring green greenhouse gas emissions, both at the herd level and at the animal level. Um, so just moving on. So G plus E stands for Genotype Plus Environment. It was a five-year EU-funded project that ran from uh, 2014 to, to 2018. There were 15 partners in the project, so quite, quite a large project, and the work was divided up into nine individual work packages. Uh, the aim of the project is spelt out here. Uh, it's to develop and exploit genomic data and analytic tools, new phenotyping approaches and breeding strategies for sustainable dairy production systems. Um, moving on to the partners, so again, there's, there's quite a large number of partners there. There were partners from Ireland, the UK, Denmark, Belgium, uh, Italy, Germany, and there was also a partner from the USA and also from, from China. Uh, it, here is an overview of the work packages. Uh, You'll be glad to know I'm not going to go through all of these in, in detail, but I'll just maybe pick out some of the packages that might be of interest to us today. Uh, work package two, uh, which I, I, I was involved in a bit, um, dealt with the creation of the research database, uh, the harmonization of the data flows, the data models. Uh, so there's quite a lot of work went into that, setting up the actual research data platform that the researchers then could use. Work package three then dealt with the study of what are the existing and potential phenotypes that are at play in the milk, in the physiological status of the animal, and then how they come into play in terms of the health and environment, environmental uh, impact of, of the animal. Uh, if you look at uh, work package four, then that dealt with genotype markers and looked at uh, linking these genotype markers with the phenotypes we were looking to, to predict in the um, milk and then seeing how they can be tied together to come up with genetic evaluations and, and so on. Work package six then, um, that actually took a broader view and that, that looked at management strategies at farm level uh, that would promote efficiencies, uh, sustainability and best practice in the area of animal welfare. Uh, work package seven then, uh, that looked at the most appropriate long-term breeding strategies that could be used in the European host and Frisian population. So there's quite a, a wide variety of, of uh, activities going on there. So uh, just to move on to, to, to some of the outcomes, and again, tying it back to what we're talking about today in greenhouse gas emissions and, and, so, uh, and methane in, in particular, um, certainly uh, the energy balance and feed efficiency of the dairy cow do have an impact on enteric methane emissions. Uh, so one of the problems is how, how do you measure this? Well, the uh, results from uh, G plus E and similar pro products, projects show that uh, one can detect uh, cows with an imbalanced, imbalanced energy status thanks to the measurement of a few biomarkers in the milk. This then will allow the farmer and their vet and advisor to make management and breeding decisions. Um, then in terms of outcomes for, for phenotypes, um, again, uh, MIR, and for those of you who don't know, MIR stands for Mid-Infrared uh, Spectroscopy. It's a direct measure of, of a milk sample that happens during milk recording. Uh, typically, these samples, uh, tip, uh, typically milk recording will report fat and protein, but there's a lot of other data as well that can be gathered during milk recording. Um, so MIR spectra uh, has the potential for uh, coming up with cheap and easy to implement accurate predictions of the metabolic status of, of the cow. Uh, MIR data can also be used to come up with other phenotypes and are predicting phenotypes, sorry, uh, and G plus E added to, to this knowledge and came up with predictions on nitrogen efficiency. Other areas as well that, that were looked at were the, the combination of, um, again, predicted phenotypes of uh, BHB, NEFA, IGF-1, uh, to, uh, to come up with a, a status of the energy balance uh, within the animal. For, for breeding, um, so, so then tying it back to the genomics, um, 
it, it was found that a, a targeted combination of estimated breeding values for some of these lower accuracy mare based biomarkers increased their, their usefulness in genetic evaluations of, of dairy cattle for robustness. Uh, there was also some work done that came to the conclusions that uh, genome-wide association studies may help in the selection for improved resilience of, of dairy cattle to, to heat stress. So then to just, just to give a summary, and I'll, I'll probably be pulling on some of my experience from other projects uh, outside of G plus E here. Um, tying it all back to you know, all that we've heard here today and, and methane emissions and how do we measure it, um, I keep coming back to the old adage that you cannot improve what you cannot measure. Um, so from where I'm looking at it, uh, access to high value phenotypic data will be key to firstly getting an accurate measure of greenhouse gas emissions from livestock and then secondly implementing the appropriate breeding and management policies that reduce these greenhouse gas impacts in a measurable way. Uh, then technologies, and again we've, we've heard a lot about technologies today, and there's a lot of technology out there. There's a lot of sensors, uh, a lot of new sensor technology, uh, there's new techniques like machine learning, and these are providing innovative ways of collecting phenotypes uh, and of analyzing those phenotypes. But again, uh, with so much uh, data and so much new technology, we mustn't forget things like accuracy standardization and the field testing of these new sensors and these new techniques. And it, again, we mustn't forget existing technologies that are still very, very valuable. Things, simple things like accurate live weight data of dairy cows, uh, you know, can give an indication of things like feed efficiency um, and measurements like body condition score. Uh, then uh, finally, um, again, uh, the area of genomics and genetics are key tools in greenhouse gas mitigation. And newer studies show direct correlations between improved genetic merit and reduced uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So that's me, thank you.